Hello everybody, this is Dan Calloway from the Linux Unix uh, Tech Channel and today I'm going to show you how you can go about running a Windows uh, operating system as a VM in Microsoft's Hyper-V platform uh, and run it in full screen. Uh, that's I know it's an issue that a lot of people have not being able to run uh, VMs in full screen. So I'm going to show you how to do it. And we're going to accomplish that using what's called a remote desktop connection. Uh, so I'm bringing up my uh, Microsoft Hyper-V now. I've already got it set up, uh, connecting to my server, which is my desktop. And um, I'm running Windows 7 Ultimate here. I've got it turned off right now. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. So I'm going to go ahead and click, uh, not settings, let me go cancel, click start, and start the VM. Okay, it's got an automatic checkpoint that came up. And I'm going to connect to it here. And um, it may say that it was turned off inappropriately, but no, it looks like it's okay. I'm going to click View, Full Screen Mode, uh, so we can get into full screen mode here. Um, and go ahead and launch Windows uh, 7 Ultimate. I'm running in Windows 10 Pro as the host, by the way. All right, so let me go ahead and log in. Put the password in. Data Pioneer is my username, and I put a password in. Okay, so this is what you're presented with uh, normally. Uh, in Hyper-V, I can't live with it. Maybe some people can, but it's, it's way too small. Uh, if you try to resize this thing, you know, you just can't do it. You can't resize it. Uh, if you do a right-click and do a screen resolution, uh, you can see that it's at 1024 by 768 right now. And I'm running with a widescreen HD monitor, which is 1920 by 1080 screen resolution, so that's not going to work. 1600 by 1200 is the most you can get out of it, and it's still not, not big enough. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this and uh, get out of it altogether. Um, and show you now how I went about um, fixing that problem. All right, so when we get back to Hyper-V, all right, I'm going to need to shut down temporarily uh, the uh, VM of Windows 7 Ultimate. So it's shutting down now. Okay, it's off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the virtual switch manager here in Hyper-V. And you'll notice that we have uh, only the default switch set up uh, for any VMs that create. So I'm going to click on new virtual network switch. I'm going to create an internal network switch, not uh, external or private. I'm going to create that virtual switch and I'm going to call it LAN so that I know what it is. It seems to be appropriate. Local area network. I'm going to click OK to create that internal only uh, virtual switch for Hyper-V. All right, and now what I'm going to do, once I've got that created, I'm going to go into the settings for the closed Windows 7 Ultimate, and you'll notice that for network adapter, I only have the default switch here. So I'm going to add hardware, network adapter. I'm going to add, and then I'm going to add that LAN network switch to my virtual machine. All right, so now that's done. I'm going to go ahead and check it. I'm going to hit settings on the virtual machine and I've now got a network adapter which is the default switch that'll get me out to the internet and then the network adapter LAN will get me connected to uh, Windows 10 locally okay uh, so that I can run an RDC from Windows 10 into Windows 7 Ultimate. Okay so I'm going to go ahead and close this alright I'm going to go ahead now and fire up the virtual machine again of Windows 7 Ultimate and then I'm going to go ahead and reconnect to it and I, we probably will get the uh, indication that we turned it off inappropriately. No we didn't, that's good. Alright so we're going to get view full screen and let's go ahead and fire that up okay let's go ahead and log in we're still at the lower resolution, but that's because we haven't uh, done the next step yet. All right, so we're still at the low resolution. Notice we've got the Microsoft Virtual Machine Adapter number six popped up. We should expect to see that. If you don't, uh, it probably didn't work. That's the adapter that I just added into Windows 7 Ultimate. 
All right, so what I need to do here is I need to do two things. I need to check the whether this machine here, Windows 7 Ultimate, is accepting connections from a remote desktop computer. <clears throat> uh, and to do that, I can click on the Start button and just start typing the word remote here in the <clears throat> search field. Come up to Allow Remote Access to Your Computer. Click that link. Typically, it's on the Don't Allow connections to this computer by default. So I went ahead and clicked on the Allow Connections from Computers Running any version of remote desktop, okay, less secure. I'm going to go ahead and apply that and then click OK. So now this this uh, virtual machine will accept the remote desktop connection. Uh, that's that's important that I do that. Let me go out real quick to the virtual machine uh, and let me, uh, I mean to the, well to Windows 10 rather, Pro. Now let me do a command slash k ip config. Now let's see what we have as far as Ethernet adapters. Um, I'm looking for the one that says LAN and here it is. Ethernet adapter v Ethernet, that's what I called it. And this is the address that we uh, we have now from Windows 10 Pro uh, that is set up internally. So that allows me to connect to um, the Windows 7 Ultimate Machine through what's called an, a, a PIPA connection, which is an automatic uh, uh, IP address when it can't get one from DHCP. It's called a PIPA, A-P-I-P-A. -A. All right, so let me go ahead and do exit here and get out. And then let's get back into the virtual machine of Windows 7 Ultimate. Let me do the same thing here, CMD, forward slash K, IP config. And uh, this is the important one. Uh, we're, we're going to need to know what connection 6 has for an APIPA address, which is 169.254.67.240. So 254.67.240. All right, so let me go ahead and exit here. All right, now let's get back out to remote desktop connection. And it's 169.254.67.240. I believe. I can just check it real quick just to make sure. Uh, I may have forgotten it. Um, let's do a command support slash k ip config. And uh, sure enough, it's 67240. So we're good. All right. Exit out of this and uh, we get back into the remote desktop connection. So now this is the RDC in Windows 10 Pro. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect to our virtual machine of Windows 7 Ultimate through this IP address, which is the APIPA address. So I'm going to click Connect, and I get this box that says Windows Security, enter your credentials. Okay. Um, do not want to add the, uh, the uh, password here for Data Pioneer in this window because this is the Microsoft account logon. Uh, I'm not doing that. I'm logging on as if I were sitting in front of my Windows 7 Ultimate machine, and that's not a Microsoft account. So I'm going to click More Choices. I'm going to come down and you use different account. Okay. Now this is the credentials I would use if I were sitting in front of my Windows 7 Ultimate machine. So that's Data Pioneer as the username, and then the password. Okay. Now I could click Remember Me, but that's okay. I'm not going to do that. Click OK. And we're going to get this uh, warning that, you know, this identity can't be verified. So you don't have a certificate. So that's okay. You're just going to click yes. We know it's safe. And that should take us out through an RDC connection. And it does. Uh, I'm going to postpone the re reinstall of the updates. Uh, but here we are. Uh, this is Windows 7 Ultimate. Uh, and it's in widescreen uh, HD. Let's verify the resolution. Right click on the screen screen resolution. We have 1920 by 1080. So we've got the full widescreen HD 1920 by 1080 resolution here. That's what we we're striving for. Okay. All right. Um, you can see here, let's say we let's go ahead and right click on the start menu. Uh, well, notice this click on the start menu rather and let's go up to say control panel. Okay. So you can see, you know, we're using this machine, virtual machine right now as if it were our daily driver. All right. So if somebody came by my machine right now, I walked away, 
they would think I was running Windows 7 Ultimate. I mean, this is this is perfectly what you want. This is exactly what you want. Uh, took me a while to figure this out, but this this is really the only way that you can uh, attach to a virtual machine running in Hyper-V in Windows uh, 10 Pro or Enterprise uh, using Microsoft's Hyper-V Manager in order to get full screen resolution. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get 1152 by 864, I believe, at a minimum. Now, I'm going to do another video later that shows how to accomplish this in Linux. It's a little more difficult. It's a lot, well, actually a lot more difficult to do. It's not a simple matter of just connecting uh, RDC into it. Um, you've got to go into Linux. And it also depends on the distro you're using. You know, what gets in the way of making the connection and that kind of stuff. But anyway, this has been a video of RDCing into um, a uh, Microsoft Hyper-V VM in order to gain full widescreen HD resolution. Let me go ahead and shut down um, Windows 7 Ultimate. Okay. And uh, have a nice day.